G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, we have got Kasva, who is playing as the Delhi Sultanate. Towards the north side of the map, we've got his opponent, Iagos, who is playing as the Red French. This is part of N4C qualifying number two. We are currently in the quarterfinals. Whoever wins this will be going through to the semifinals and uh, will then go through onto the, or at least potentially go on to the finals uh, for a, a seat at the table at Berlin. Uh, so for anybody unfamiliar with exactly what I'm talking about, so N4C, a $100,000 tournament hosted by Nilly. I'll leave all the information you need to know about that in the description. But uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about this game, about what we are going to be uh, expecting out of this game. So, uh, French versus Delhi, I think is a pretty good matchup for both civs. I'd be very happy to be either of these two civilizations. So I don't think there's any real disadvantage uh, here, but uh, Delhi going to be starting off strong. We already see the mill out. Early wheelbarrow coming in as well for Casper. So he's going to be happy with that. On the opening with a single scout, looking to grab the, uh, the lumber camp as well. Um, and slowly but steadily getting that wood in. On the other side of the map, it is going to be a single scout opening as well for Iagos. And we also see an early wheelbarrow coming out. And this is something that is becoming more and more common. We are seeing this in pretty much every matchup on, on all sorts of maps. Uh, but uh, yeah, early wheelbarrow seems to be the name of the game. I'd be curious to see how fast Iagos is uh, able to get up here. Uh, now, just a little bit about these players. Now, you guys should be familiar with Casper if you've ever played Age of Empires 2. Undoubtedly, you have heard this guy's name. He has been around plenty of times. And uh, yeah, quite a strong player when it comes to AoE 4 now. I think on the ladder at the moment, ranked number 45. So not too bad at all. Definitely way up there. Uh, his opponent on the other side, Iagos, uh, I, I go way back with this guy. Uh, back in the day, I played under a different nick, so I don't think he knows me. Uh, but um, yeah, back in uh, in StarCraft 2 uh, beta day, so I'm talking back in 2010, uh, that's when I was playing this guy. So he is actually from Australia as well, so another one of those, uh, those handsome Australian blokes. You know we like to stick together, and we're all good looking, us Australian fellas. But uh, yeah, Iorgas, I <laughs> Iorgas, Iorgas uh, is... Uh, yeah, he's doing well. Doing well so far. Um, and uh, sitting rank 79 on the ladder. So keep an eye out for him. Uh, I suspect he's going to be quite uh, quite a competition or quite a, uh, a competitor uh, going up against Casper. Casper going to be looking to head into that mosque now. Uh, dropping that one down. I'll expect that we see efficient production followed by Piety, followed by Herbal Medicine. And indeed, we do. And now that Dome of the Faith is going to be going down uh, just outside the town center. Um, but uh, a pretty standard build order coming in from Casper here. I think if uh, if you were ever really looking to to do a Delhi build order, this is about uh, exactly what you would expect. On the other side of the map, it looks like Iago is uh, going to be dropping down uh, his School of Cavalry. Uh, and uh, not too late, if I'm honest. The fact that he's got that wheelbarrow nice and early doesn't really delay his age up. He is going up with four villages on the landmark, though. I think typically you'd probably see about three or maybe even two to start with and then a third one added. But uh, obviously, you know, he's going to try and get it up a bit faster because he is delayed from aging up just for because of uh, because of he, he, he got that uh, that wheelbarrow upgrade. But only the one scout for him. Uh, so kind of rare to actually see a French player go for a single scout opening. To me, that would indicate they're not going to be going for professional scouts and would just to, uh, would just look to mill up their deer hunts. Uh, but we'll have to see how he plays it. On the other side of the map, efficient production almost finished. 55 seconds uh, before it is complete. I expect that uh, once Casper gets up to the second age, we're looking to pick up Sanctity as quickly as possible. So might look to finish efficient production and then get Sanctity shortly thereafter. So we'll have to wait. We'll have to see exactly how he plays it. He's going to be looking to scout out his opponent now. On the other side of the map, you can see Yagos has done the same thing. Not really a lot of scouting going on at this stage uh, for him, but uh, look, checking out the stone, looking to spot if there's going to be any sneaky early second town center shenanigans. Obviously sees the, the age up uh, time here for the School of Cavalry as well. So knows that it's a little bit delayed here. Uh, it looks like a 423 age up going to be coming through for Casper. A new age has begun for him. And uh, we'll see how he goes, whether he looks to get Sanctity uh, as his immediate research upon reaching the second age. Let's take a look and see what he does here. Whether he just goes straight into Piety, which if I'm honest... Actually, he switched these two around. He went for Herbal Medicine over Piety. That is a bit strange. Uh, that's now researched. He's going to be picking up Sanctity. Uh, and then into Herbal Medicine, Piety, and then the All-Seeing Eye. Uh, some interesting texts that the uh, that the Delhi have got access to. Uh, but now you can see he's going to be jumping out with his Scholar, heading out over into his barracks, and going to be looking to get that efficient production 
on board. Uh, hasn't got them inside. Okay, there we go. Now going to be jumping inside seven seconds for a spear. Going to be coming out here. He's going to be shadowing back any units that come out from Iagos. And uh, obviously, he's got the scout out, but yet to have any uh, any sort of knight. And you can see that uh, we've got Casper uh, hovering here with his scout, just making sure that uh, making sure that everything is going to be, uh, you know, being played fairly. Uh, now, at the same time, Yagus is uh, scouting out the barracks here for his opponent. He's going to drop down a, a uh, an archery range in response to that. Uh, now, I expect that Casper's probably going to see that archery range, and he'll drop down a stable in response to that, as they typically do. Uh, but now we've uh, we've got Sanctity on the way in. Still some time before that comes in, so another two minutes. Casper going to continue making scholars. Uh, we'll tune in with him. You can see he's got those two villagers on gold and just a couple of spears on the gold mine. So very smart moves out here from Casper. And I got to say, I like the way that he has opened already. Um, interestingly, no wall across here. So one of the things to do is if you are going to have a, a bit of an open flank, you probably just want to wall that up. But I, I mean, he doesn't really need it at this point in time. I think the spears up here are probably going to be more than enough for him. And now that, uh, that stable, as we mentioned, does come up in response to the archery range. And uh, the composition for him is going to be largely a melee one. But now it looks like the first first attempt at some sort of uh, offense is going to be coming in here. Iaguas gets repelled. Um, and uh, now going to be looking to drop down that blacksmith that we talked about just beforehand. So probably going to be looking to go into melee uh, attack and maybe ranged armor. Probably going to be the priorities for him. Uh, but uh, Casper now continuing to scout out his opponent. Spots out the next Royal Knight coming. And we spot a barracks actually coming down for Iago. So, and an archery range as well. So looking to play, this is a very classic build order from Give You Anxiety, uh, where you essentially play four production buildings in age two, and it's a whole mix. And essentially you, you just want to double up on one, typically your ranged units. Uh, so for the English, you would just go for the council hall and then one stable, one barracks. Uh, and for every other civilization, you just go double range with your stable and with your barracks. Uh, but uh, in this situation, it looks like uh, Iagos is uh, going to continue pushing out across the map. You can see he's, uh, he's got quite a bit to contest with, though, as the horsemen are uh, going to be spotting out that scout and looking to get in on the action. A wolf also looking to get on the, in on the action as well. And finally, that uh, that hardened spearman going to be coming through here for Casper now. You can see he's up to four, uh, four scholars. Uh, no longer producing any more scholars. Just going to be sitting on four scholars for now. So he's got two inside the dome of the, or inside the uh, the mosque, and then one in each of the uh, production facilities. But it looks like he has left the building, uh, potentially heading up towards the sacred sites. I would expect. Uh, but we'll take a look now because uh, sanctity is due to be coming in very, very shortly. Uh, in fact, it has just arrived. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see a, uh, a potential triple uh, attempt to capture the sacred sites. But keep in mind, uh, Yagus is aware of this and he will be looking to those sacred sites, making sure to neutralize them uh, in the event that his enemy tries to tries to do anything sneaky. Uh, but in the middle of the map now, we can see a bit of a fight beginning to to battle out. A lot of spears coming out already for Casper here. Uh, a few, few horsemen looking to get in on the action, not going to find too much yet as they get kicked back by those knights and now a bit of a raid coming down as well at the same time. Yago's doing a great job with that. You can see he's having a bit of difficulties with his line of sight but now coming in on multiple gold mines or multiple resources rather hitting the gold mine also going to be hitting that so we'll check and see whether he picked up any villagers. It doesn't look like it at this stage but at the same time uh, back towards the base of Yago's he has got those uh, got those that attack uh, being repelled. Uh, six idle villagers for him at the moment. Uh, he's managed to pick those up now. But uh, yeah, going to be looking to just construct units full time here. We can see he's got the double bow. Yeah, the uh, the spear just come out. Uh, and actually going to be adding in a second barracks now. Uh, so that is two barracks and uh, a third archery range. So he is going big. And I think part of the reason why he's able to go so big here is just because he's got that uh, wheelbarrow upgrade. This is one of the things that we rarely saw people doing the early game. Uh, when I say the early game, I mean, you know, Age of Empires 4 in the, in the first couple of weeks when this was the meta strategy to do. Uh, something that was popularized by Give You Anxiety back when I think he was sitting up at about top five on the ladder. But now in the middle of the map, it looks like we've got ourselves a little bit of walling coming out from Casper. Double, uh, double scholar under the sacred site. You only need one, right? Doesn't actually capture any faster with two. Uh, but each to their own. Each to their own. And now it looks like uh, no more scholars going to be coming out. Uh, it doesn't tell you how many scholars he's sitting on. But we can see that there's one, two, three, uh, definitely. Uh, and uh, now it looks like a fourth one, fifth one out in the middle here. Uh, yeah, so it looks like about five scholars at this point in time. 
Uh, so pretty decent amount of scholars, I would say. Uh, but also note this blacksmith is up. No upgrades have come through uh, at this point. So a bit of a fail there from Casper. Um, not doing a particularly good job of getting those upgrades or paying attention. But obviously there's a lot going on in this game. So, you know, there's 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 plenty of excuses to throw up. But it looks like the sacred site. Oh, yeah, hate when that happens. Hopefully. So what you could do is run your second scholar out. Keep your first scholar there. It will capture the sacred site. If he's smart enough, he should be able to do it. Uh, unfortunately, wasn't healing uh, the second scholar as he was running it around. Uh, now going to be losing both of those scholars um, and uh, not going to be able to capture up the sacred site. So definitely a little victory there over towards his opponent. Uh, and now Casper going to be forced back here, potentially losing a third scholar as well. It does indeed go down. So a bit of a misplay there from Casper. Uh, and for anybody that just wants a little bit of an explanation of what was happening here. So he's got two units and uh, his enemy is attacking one. So what he can do is he can keep his first unit on the sacred site right there take this the first unit move it outside the sacred site so the cavalry unit is going to follow it and then begin to patrol it around back and forth like that and then that way he's able to heal it up and capture the sacred site at the same time and then once you've captured the sacred site i mean that's half the battle uh because uh you're going to be getting such a good gold income from that and then you can just sort of run around and your enemy sort of forced to to make a decision am i going to try and kill him or am i going to try and contest the site what am i going to do uh but uh Kasfa, uh, he's now lost his first sacred site. Still got this third sacred site that he's yet to take. And if we look at the map, Iago knows about this, but he's just not even out here. And I think this is probably one of the biggest issues that Delhi players make. So if you're watching this on YouTube right now and you're a Delhi player or you like Delhi, you're interested in them and you're looking for some tips, my number one tip would be when Sanctity is researched, send a single scholar out to every single site on the map because you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. The ones you win, they will more than cover your losses. So think about that for a second. These guys here, 75 gold. How much does a sacred site trickle for the Delhi? At the very first capture, it is 66 gold. Before your enemy can even prevent it uh, from from being uh, or from neutralizing the, the sacred site, you will get subsequently paid another 66 gold. So it essentially pays itself off with one scholar guaranteed. It almost pays off two scholars as well. Well, so do not be afraid to send out those scholars uh, and most importantly always be training uh, your scholars in the Dome of the Faith really important to have these guys there's no such thing as an excess amount of scholars I mean there probably is once you can start getting into the late game and we're talking about you know 25 scholars I think that's probably a bit too many uh, but you are going to have uses for them throughout the game we've seen many games where people like Salami uh, in particular are just able to consistently have 20 scholars in the late game but uh yeah, if, if, that is, uh, if that's what you're doing as a Delhi player, try and avoid doing that and, uh, and look to take those sacred sites early. Look to just throw out, you know, I've, I've got that classic saying, you know, you throw spaghetti at the wall until some of it sticks. And that's what you're doing when you've got those three sacred sites, the three scholars. You're throwing three scholars out there, even if one of them sticks. And hey, that's a pretty decent investment. Now, you can always compound that. You can always say, well, okay, I'm going to st stick an outpost out here as well. I'm going to stick some, some walls out here with my spears. Um... Has Iago spotted this? I don't even think he might. Have, I don't even think he's spotted this yet. So a bit of a bit of a um, scouting blunder here from both players because there are three sheep sitting out on that flank. But I think that's the consequence of going for the single scout opening uh, towards the center. It looks like a single spear is just going to hammer down this palisade wall. And this is such a smart move here as well, uh, just having a single spear doing this. So one of the things to note is every time you are, um, you know, you're sitting here playing. Listen to the attacks that are, uh, or the uh, attack alarms that are going to go off. They begin to cloud your ears. And you might be under attack out over here. You can hear that sound. You're under attack, under attack. And then guess what? A raid hits your base. And all of a sudden, you don't hear that sound because your brain is tuning it out. You can hear it now happening across all the map. All, all these different places on the map you're under attack from. Um, and, uh, you know, th this only makes this attack uh, even even stronger just because it begins to divert attention. But speaking of diverted attention, Yago's beginning to build up a pretty significant archer mass here. Uh, no upgrades at the moment for any of these units out here. No plus ones at all uh, across the board. He is yet to do anything like that. Obviously has the Siege Engineering tech that has come through. Uh, actually, I do take it back. He does have decarbonization, but that is the stock standard. Now we're going to have ourselves a little bit of a land battle. A little bit of a land battle. Well, obviously, this is a, this is a Rabia, and that's what we do here. But some beautiful age two battling happening right now. The archers on the back line doing a very decent job. You can see them beginning to push up, trying to fight out against those spears. Not having a lot of luck now, but uh, a knight on the back line trying its best to take down those spears. Just a single knight here. And it looks like uh, Iarkos is going to be overwhelming his opponent, but at the same time as they uh, they do come in, 
uh, we, we see the horse archers beginning to, uh, well, the horse archers, the, the horsemen, uh, beginning to drive. But it looks like an overwhelming victory at this point in time for Iagos. Uh, I'm curious to see how Casper is going to be able to hold this. Now, it doesn't look like he's going up to age three at this stage. So Manganels are out of the question. A second battering ram going to be coming down here as well for Casper. For, uh, Casper's opponent, uh, Iagos. And uh, you can see Casper beginning to evacuate here. He kind of realizes that uh, that these villages are under threat. And uh, a very smart move to come into the wood line here. Utilize these archers. There's 38 archers now. No plus one for any of these bad boys just yet. Uh, still no plus one coming in here. So a bit of a strange commitment. The fact that you would have 37 archers, but still not go for that plus one. It's really going to help you out a lot against horsemen. Uh, I think at this point, you're almost going to start to one-shot them. Uh, I mean, you've got... Uh, it, we're talking 37 here here um and let's say they've all got six attack and they're going up the up against the two range armor that's four in total uh so four damage times 37 it, it would be the difference between one shotting a horseman and two shotting a horseman so that's the sort of uh the bonus you can get from those upgrades but casper now going to be looking to pick up some reinforcements still under attack in the middle of the map you can hear that siren going off and now we'll watch as uh, as this horseman tries its best uh to to hold on doesn't Hold on, actually loses his friend there. And you can see just how much health Casper uh, is uh, is managing to keep on those horsemen. Not a lot at all. They are barely scratching his opponent. But uh, yeah, I can definitely I definitely feel like at the moment, the, the downfall of Casper, at least at this point, is the lack of sacred sites. Ideally, you just want to be sending out scholars nonstop. Your enemy comes out here. They, they hold the sacred site. That's fine. You go send out a couple spears and then you take the sacred site from them. If you do not, if you do not take the sacred sites, you will not win the game as the uh, as the Delhi. And now he looks to be coming out here. A bit of a curious decision to be sending it right into your enemy's reinforcements line. Uh, we can see that you know typically a player is going to be rallying towards the front of his base or in front of his enemy's base, and then looking to bring in those reinforcements. He obviously uh, has got walked right into those lines. So you know you want to be walking out towards the edge, get on top of those sacred sites. But he's going to be able to to, to set and forget that spear. And, uh, and be able to take it. Now we continue to see Casper getting punished as the battering rams begin to batten down the hatches. And uh, we'll tune back in with the Argus, who looks like he might be heading up to the third age very shortly. And this is such a smart move. He's got a, a huge lead already when it comes to his military. If we take a look at the score uh, between these two guys, you can see that Iagos is up to 67 military. Casper only on 46. So he's got a 21 uh, population military advantage. Military population advantage. Uh, that is absolutely huge. And he's just going to look to convert that into an even larger lead now. Uh, 64 villagers for Iagos, 49. So a big lead there as well. Uh, 15 villagers obviously playing the French. But uh, it all just simply comes down to not taking the sacred sites here. Not forcing your opponent out on the map not taking those those uh effective trades looking to pick up their uh their reinforcements because that is something that will happen uh typically your enemy you, you might take this sacred site your enemy will send all of their forces out in this direction and then you you can swoop around the back like that and uh and look to potentially take out their uh their reinforcements but now we continue to see casper trying to hold on for dear life losing all of his scholars you can see them just getting picked off here uh one by one i think he actually misclicked an archer there unfortunately uh, but uh, Iago's looking incredibly strong. The uh, the Australian, the, the, the thunder from down under. <laughs> I think that's the, that's what we were going with uh, for our Australian friends. Uh, the thunders from down unders. Uh, but now going to be able to clean up the battering rams. But keep in mind behind this, Iago's is on the way up to the castle age very shortly. Only 22 gold remains until he hits up. We'll do a quick score check and see where these guys are at. You can see Iago's has got about an 800 score lead at the moment. We'll switch it over to income per minute. I know you guys love to see that one. You can see the huge lead coming out here for Iagos as well. I feel like at this point, you know, we're 18 minutes into this game, but I feel like it's over. Uh, but keep in mind, this is a tournament game. This is game number one. You always want to try and win game number one. And you might be wondering, Drongo, you know, what's so important about game number one? Game two and game three just as important? Yeah, they are. But you've got to remember, you're coming into this. This is kind of like your uh, the, the very, very beginning. If you can take game number one off your enemy you can assume that they will take game number two off you because they'll get their home map. They'll get the civilization that they plan to use with it. But game three, it's going to be yours. It's going to be your home map. It's going to be your civilization. It's going to be, you know, you're fighting your enemy on your home turf. And then hopefully you should be able to win that with a higher chance. Uh, and you can see this spear is now actually finally um, 
manage to, to cut through the, the gate, he's going to have to reallocate it to another wall. Um, but uh, essentially, yeah, that, that's that's the primary reason why you want to win Arabia uh, is because obviously you're going to have a better chance of winning your home map, but uh, you're not going to have a better chance of winning your enemy's home map. So you want to try and make it as easy upon yourself as possible. And as a result, I think that's why we see Casper sticking around here. But as you guys do know, Casper is the kind of guy who will stick around until the very end because he's always got a plan in store. I wouldn't be surprised if we see this guy go for a sneaky little side attack or something like that and try and take out some landmarks. You know, he's famous for doing that sort of stuff. Guildhall going down for Iagos, and he's going to be going with the wood generation. Very curious decision here. I don't think I've seen this before. Potentially looking at just going into full archers as well, like just sticking with the archers, spam. Maybe that's what he's looking to do and looking to supplement it. Veteran archers going to be coming in shortly. We see the men at arms coming out now. I love the French men at arms. Absolutely awesome looking. They're very, very silver. It kind of looks like a man in a silver outfit uh, who, is, uh, who has just gotten, I mean... He's just entirely silver. It's literally just the Michelin, Michelin man uh, in, a, in a different chroma. Uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a League of Legends joke. I'm not sure if you guys get that. Uh, it, it's essentially you can buy like skins for, for champions there, but you get chromas, which is like you can change the color of the cool skin. It's, it's, a, it's a cool concept. You know, maybe maybe we'll get different chromas on, uh, on, on our men at arms one day. Probably not actually, because the, I think that would just be called different colors. Uh, but uh, you know, maybe we might get those one day too. Hint, hint, developers, hint, hint. You know, the colors other than blue and red, I would like to see them occasionally. Um, <laughs> but sorry, sorry guys. Uh, you know, that, that's just, that's the once once a video rant at the developers. Uh, Castle making a bit of a, of a mistake here. Definitely getting caught up towards the north here. Uh, Wolf getting in on the action as well, trying his best and getting up up in the mix. You can see him getting in there. I think he's the Wolf is up to one kill here. Looks like he might be going for his second one. You can see him trying to focus this down as well. He's got an Archer on the back. It looks like he's going to continue biting towards that. Archer going to be going down here. He's done a great job. Picks up the first one. Second one going to be coming in. You can see right now the wolf just biting constantly non-stop. Is he even doing any damage? Let's be real for a second. Don't take out the wolf. Don't take out the wolf. Don't take out the wolf, Yagos. I know you see it. I know you want to. Do not do it. Leave that wolf. Leave that man. No, not like this. No, not Warwick the wolf. Hey, hey. <laughs> in League, there's a, there's a champion. It's called Warwick and it's a wolf. You know, W. That's where I was going like, what's another name? What's it? Okay. Okay, John. Okay. Okay. Twitch chatter. Okay. YouTube commenter. Scotty from Wales. Was it Scotty from Wales? I think it was Scotty from Wales. Maybe it was John from Wales. What's another name that you could have that starts with W? Like Walt the Wolf? Like, come on. Walter White. Walter White the Wolf. Like, yeah, we've all seen Breaking Bad, mate. Calm down. Relic going to be jumping in inside the outpost. Very smart move there. Now, he could Relic Bomb at any stage here. It would be pretty cool cool to see as well. Uh, we'll do a quick assessment of the Relics. It looks like they're uh, starting to get picked up across the map. Uh, we can see that there's two out there at the moment, but uh, we know for sure there's one in here. He should be bopping this one out if he's smart. He's going to pop it out. He comes in for the Wallalol as well. Seeing if he can actually get the capture here. He might be able to switch the tide of battles. Manages to, to capture only a couple of archers despite the delay in response there. That could have turned the tide of battle. And I guess that asks the question, you know, can Casper's Monk turn the tide of battle? I mean, at, at this point in time, it looks like the answer is going to be no. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, when I when I think about this game, when I think about Casper playing this game, I really feel like it's just been a very simple um, sort of miscalculation on his part, not going for these sacred sites. Uh, he had a lot of opportunities to go for them before the aggression really kicked in. And now he's really starting to eat. Um, you know, he's, he's really starting to eat humble pie. I don't know if that's the right term. Probably not. But you know me. I just throw random terms. I throw, I'm a spaghetti thrower. Um, but uh, Archer's doing a pretty decent job. Obviously starting to mix in Arbolatria as well. We can see those for the inevitable men at arms that, that are coming out. Now we see the crossbows also going to be coming out for Casfar uh, here. Arbolatria, keep in mind, once they drop that Pavise shield, uh, they are going to be taking a lot less ranged armor. And once they do look to get those, that Gamison upgrade as well, they're uh, going to be taking a lot less a lot less melee damage. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the Argus uh, looking in a very strong position. We'll do another score check just to see how far ahead he is, sitting up about 1,800 points at this this time. Uh, so, yeah, he is uh, he's not really in any doubt of losing. I like the forward farms coming out here as well from him. I You know, I always like to meme on forward farms because there's just absolutely no reason to do it. Uh, I, I think that, you know, you, you could, your villagers can just, like, what it, what's it going to be? Like, a 14-second walk just to put your farms over here? Your enemy comes in here, bam, you're idle. It's a bad luck. 
Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's really important to, to sort of uh, always look to be placing those farms a bit more safely, especially on a map like this, uh, which is very open uh, and, and uh, plenty of space. But uh, Yago is now looking to capture up multiple sacred sites. The second one going to be taken up for him. Obviously, towards the north, he's looking to secure it with an outpost as well. Oh, did I say towards the north? I guess this is more towards the east. Uh, but uh, we hear more sacred sites or more uh, relics getting picked up. I think that's the second one for him. He's already got one in the bag. So second one for him. Uh, and we'll check down towards Casper's side. It looks like Casper has added a second town center. He has picked up three relics. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, I think this is a smart move for Casper. Uh, if we do a bit of a stock tank right now, Casper currently sits on 67 villagers. Iago sitting on a 104, so that really is the difference. Uh, now, obviously, he has added a second town center already. I genuinely don't know how long that has been up for, but that could have been years. Uh, with my with my eyesight, you guys know what it's like. Uh, but uh, Men at Arms starting to get more and more upgrades. Uh, looks like we're going for the classic Men at Arm crossbow combination. Uh, what I would really like to see out of Casper is just a Mangonel, a single Mangonel, uh, just just for those veteran archers and for those crossbows to get to or Ablatrie. I think that would really help. Now, keep in mind, you've got to be so careful pushing in against these monks, uh, against these mosques. Uh, at any point in time, he could pull the villagers back here begin to engage and then at the same time go for a triple wallalo let's see if he does it he could potentially do that here uh obviously can always get picked off as well if he's not careful we we now begin to see the engage triple wallalo not going to be coming out at least not at this time i don't think he can really contest this army the mass that's coming out now from iagos is just so damn big at this point in time and now falling back underneath the town center there might be a little opportunity to go for it here you can sort of force your enemy over in this direction but i don't think he's really thinking about it got to be able to clean up a, a fair bit of these um archers and, and now looking to go for it caspar looking to to channel his his uh in our uh, inner salami, but not unfortunately having much luck. I think he um, he got nothing from that. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Uh, so one of them getting picked off, the other two just getting walked away from, and uh, it can be very, very difficult uh, trying to time that. And we saw that earlier. Um, so uh, all of Casper's army getting cleaned up now. Uh, we will bring the UI back in and take a look. He's got six military production, or well, six military, but keep in mind he's got two, four, five. Uh, so I think in total he's got uh, all of that military production is just his his uh, scholars. Uh, you can see he's got uh, I think five is is what is represented there. But uh, back on the other side of the map, it looks like Iago is going to be going up to Imperial as well. And I think this might be a good game well played at this point. Now, fellas. I'm suspecting we're going to see a tap out any second. I'm going to just remind you very calmly. Maganel actually coming out, but I think it's way too little too late. You can see it just getting one shot there. So a bit too slow, unfortunately, for Kasvar. This has been part of N4C. Now, N4C is happening early March. I'm going to leave a link in the description to where you can find out more. I'm going to be posting on YouTube every single day in the lead up to N4C and during N4C. So you guys are going to have plenty of games. But each, each game that I cast, I'm going to be reminding you about N4C, what I want you to do. Come over to the Twitch channel. Make sure you check that bad boy out. Make sure you come watch some of the live games because you're going to have incredible players here. You may potentially see Iagos. You may potentially see Casper. Who knows whether they're going to get through, but at the moment, it's looking more likely to be Iagos. And he actually drops down a uh, the Red Palace <laughs> right on the front line in the base of his enemy. So very, very cheeky there. But the good game, obviously, getting called and Casper tapping out of this one. So, fellas, I'll once again leave links in the description to both of these guys. Make sure you check them out. I'll catch you in the next one.